Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Barabo Sitole and I'm a student from the University of Vets studying Accounting Science. So in today's video guys, we are going to continue with market structure and the market structure we are going to be focusing on is monopolistic competition. So this market structure is actually a hybrid structure. It combines a monopoly it combines a monopoly and a perfect competitor. So it's not the full monopoly structure that is combined with the full perfect competition structure, but it's some characteristics of a monopoly that are taken and brought together with some characteristics of a perfect competitor. Together they form a monopolistic competitor, right? So in this market, it's not a market, there's no market, but in this market structure, they are not barriers to entry and exit, so markets can enter and leave as they wish, right? So there are no barriers to entry or exit. There are many buyers and many sellers. The suppliers actually sell similar products. They are differentiated, but they are not the same, right? They are similar, they are not the same. So there is no one market, right? So I'm going to use a very, very simple example to explain why I said there is no market. So think about, okay, so examples of monopolistic competitors are like your, your Nike, your Puma, your, um, yeah, your clothing stores, right? So those firms actually sell similar products. You can't say that a Louis Vuitton is the same product as an Adidas shoes, right? as a Nike product. Those are two similar products, but they are not the same. They have certain characteristics that make them different, that make them unique as compared to the other product, right? The other products are substitutes, but this product has, a un has unique features that differentiates this product from other products, right? Unlike in a perfect market where all the products are the same. If you have one apple that you bought from frame one and another apple that you bought from frame two, you can't tell the difference. If you swap them around, you won't be able to tell the difference. In a monopoly, there's only one unique product. As much as you have generators, there's only one electricity, right? That's a unique product. Whereas in a monopolistic competition, there are many shoes, but those shoes are similar, but they are not the same because they have some unique features, right? That make them different, that differentiate them from other products, right? So, yeah. Um, that's why I say that there's no market, right? Because for there to be a market, there must be one product that is being sold by different people. Just like in a perfect market, there's one product. If it's the product of Apples, it's the, the product is Apples and there are many buyers and sellers. If it's Monopoly, there's only one product, whatever you are selling, electricity, right? And there's no any other product. The product you are selling is just electricity. Hence, we call it a market because they are buyers and they are sellers and they are all chasing one product, which is electricity. Whereas in a monopolistic competition, they are shoes, but the shoes are not the same. The market for Louis Vuitton, you can't combine the market for Louis Vuitton and the market for Nike. Those are two different markets, right? They are markets within that Louis Vuitton segment of the economy. So whatever clothing like store you have is a market itself it's just that there are places like malls that bring all those um frames together but just because they are in one mall or just in just because they are in one shopping center does not necessarily mean that they form a market because when when you say that it's a market you say you are saying you are saying that there's one product that is this that is the same there's one product that is like that product right and it's not differentiated it's not similar it's just either unique or it's homogeneous so because the products are similar but not the same we can't say that they form a market right yeah so i'm just going to like explain how like what economic profits whether this frame makes economic profits both in the long run the short run or they don't right so remember, in a perfect market, they only make economic profits in the short run, but no more profits in the long run. And that is because they are not barriers to entry. So when you have economic profits, other firms will enter the market. They will eat away your profits. And how do they do that? 
the supply curve actually shifts outward, right? There's an increase in supply, so the, sh the supply curve will shift outwards until such a point that remember, remember that when it shifts outside, the price will increase, right? When the price increases, your demand curve will also move upwards until you touch the AC, and then you end up making normal profits. In this case, because there's no market, it means that the supply curve cannot change, but what is going to change is your demand curve. So I'm still going to use the mall example. Let's just say you were Louis Vuitton and you only had like one store at that. There was only Louis Vuitton in that mall, right? Everyone was going to that mall was only going to buy at Louis Vuitton. And then a year later, there's Nike, there's Puma in the in the mall. Do you guys see that the demand will be spread out between the three cars between the three firms? Meaning that the demand that Louis Vuitton had initially when it was the only firm existing in the market will be less than it has now because there are other firms that are its competitors selling similar products, right? Let's just say that Adidas decides to enter the market. Do you guys see that the demand will be even further shared, right, between all the firms? So this is what happens in the short run. You, it's a monopolistic competitor has the same demand curves as like a monopoly. That is why we said we take some characteristics of a monopoly and some characteristics of a perfect competitor. And the characteristics that we take from the monopoly is like its curves, as well as the fact that their products have some form of uniqueness, right? Whereas um, the, the, the characteristics that we take from perfect competitor is the fact that there are many buyers and many sellers, as well as the fact that there are no barriers to entry, as well as the fact that they only make economic profits only in the short run. In the long run, they won't make economic profits. And like whenever like you need to decide on to whether they make economic profits in the long run and oh yeah whether they make economic profits in the long run you need to ask yourself whether this market has any barriers to entry and if barriers to entry exist right it means that when they are economic profits they can enter the market so you will still enjoy your economic profits but if they are no barriers to entry they will enter the market and as you try as you share the economic profits in that market they will be less and less until you start making normal profits and then you know you are in the long run right so because they are no barriers to entry and there are many buyers and sellers the sellers will be attracted to come to that mall because you are making economic profits and then your economic profits are going to be shared with them right so yeah so you will start by making economic profits right with the ac is below the AR. Okay. So you touch where the MR is equal to the MC, which is here. Go on, you touch this. Da, 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 da. You go on, you touch the man curve, right? This whole segment right here is actually your economic profit initially. Right? And do you guys see that just like a monopoly, they are just like a single price monopoly, they are also inefficient because they will produce here. And this whole area will be our dead weight loss, producer surplus, consumer surplus. Right? So in the long run, other firms will be attracted to enter the market, but because you are your own market as as that as Louis Vuitton, the demand curve is the one that's going to change, right? It's going to shift outward. So do you guys see the demand curve is, is here, right? So it's going to move from there. Just going to draw the demand curve alone, just to make sure that you guys understand. So this is what was happening. Okay. Um, yeah. Happens. This is the AC, sorry. So you will touch where the MR is equal to the MC. What am I missing? Oh, I'm, I'm missing my MR. Okay, I do not want to draw my MR rights, but you guys like see this because it's going to confuse you. So basically what's going to happen is that your as people enter the market, the demand curve will start shifting. It will start shifting inward, right? Because the demand is being shared between the firms. It will continue shifting inwards as more firms enter, right? Until such a time, until such a time that it shifts inward and you start touching, 
start touching the AC. So the AR will be equal to the AC at this particular point. And when that happens, now you know that you are in the long run because you are making normal profits. So let me also emphasize this. In a perfect market, the supply curve is the one that shifts. The supply curve is the one that leads to individual firms making normal profits in the long run. In the monopolistic competition, the demand curve is the one that makes the, the, the firms make normal profits in the long run, not the supply curve. And I explained that because it's because like you have no particular one market that is bringing all those suppliers together, but the suppliers are a market within themselves. So when other firms enter, that's the space they are in, the demand will be shared between those firms. Remember the example of Louis Vuitton and Nike and, and Puma? Yeah. So the, the demand will be shared between those firms and as the demand is shared, you will get less demand and less demand and less demand until such a time that your demand is so less that you are touching the AC curve, right? And when you touch the AC curve at this particular point, you are now in your long run making normal profits. So yeah, that's how it goes. Thank you for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or if like um, you need clarity on anything I mentioned, Please don't hesitate to comment in the section below. Um, see you guys in the next video. Bye.